Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. First off, I just want to apologize for missing a few weeks of uploads. I have been in the process of moving. I did mention that on my community tab, but uh, I was hoping to not miss any uploads. I was so far ahead on my videos about a month ago. I think I had like four videos ready to go, which is two weeks worth. And I was like, all right, I'm set. I'm just gonna pack, I'm gonna move. And then I'll just get right back on track once I moved in. <laughs> uh, well, I don't wanna complain too much, but <laughs> the move was <laughs> ah, so stressful. So first off, I had to leave my old place before I could move into this place about just over a week more. So I had to put all of my furniture in storage. So that was a whole thing, wrapping everything so that it could go into storage, getting the removalists, putting it in storage. <laughs> and then a week later, taking it all out of storage and trying to set up my house. So I've been moved in for just under a week now. And honestly, I am someone who, I find it really hard to focus and get work done when my space is chaotic. So I was like, okay, I'll just take a couple of days, set up my house, just enjoy moving in, enjoy organizing because I really do enjoy doing that stuff. And then I'll get right back on track with my videos. Anyways, that kind of took a bit longer than normal. I'm still not fully unpacked. I was hoping to set up my whole office and have like a new set before I started filming again, but I don't think I'll have that done till tomorrow. Anyways, long story short, I thought I would jump on here today and film a Q&A. I have been trying to do these monthly. I think I missed August though. So here we are with our September q and I'm gonna be answering some of the questions you guys asked me on a post I did on my community tab and also some of the questions you guys asked me on my last Q&A video. Oh, and I just sat down to film this and my camera is about to die. <laughs> BRB. Okay, take two. <laughs> Hopefully it's charged enough and I can get through quite a few questions. Now, before we begin, I just wanted to say that today's video is kindly sponsored by Squarespace. For everything from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that does it all. Head to squarespace.com forward slash healthcoachkate to start your free trial today. <laughs> all right, let's get into the questions. Does egg yolk with your bulletproof coffee break your fast? So technically anything you consume, any calories, whether that's fat, protein, or carbohydrates are going to break your fast for the purpose of autophagy, which is when the damaged cells in your body are being recycled. And that is one of the biggest benefits of fasting is boosting autophagy. Now, if you consume only fat, then you are doing what is known as a fat fast. So a Bulletproof coffee, which is usually MCT oil and butter or coconut oil blended into your coffee, this is all fat. So when you consume it, it has no impact on your insulin, it has no impact on your blood sugar, and you are doing what is known as a fat fast. Now the benefits of fat fasting, you might not get as much autophagy, but if your goal of fasting is to keep your blood sugar stable, to reverse insulin resistance, then a Bulletproof coffee isn't going to go against those things. So it can be consumed. Now, when it comes to an egg yolk, which is something I like to put in my coffee from time to time, if you're thinking I'm absolutely crazy for doing that, do not knock it till you try it. Make sure to blend it in and it just makes your coffee so frothy, so delicious. No, it doesn't taste eggy at all. And it's not even as though you're consuming a raw egg yolk, which I know people are concerned about because the yolk, as gross as it kind of sounds, cooks in the coffee. <laughs> it sounds so weird, but I can tell you that I get comments every single day from people who were skeptical and then tried it and most people, there are a few who are like, mm, this is weird, but most people are like, wow, 
That's delicious. So back to the question, does an egg yolk in your coffee break your fast? If you're doing a fat fast, which includes bulletproof coffee, egg yolks are mainly fat. They do have a little bit of protein. I would say it's probably not going to break your fast. It really is only a very small amount of protein. And protein for some people, based on the context of your diet, can raise your insulin. But in the context of a low carb diet, protein actually doesn't have an impact on insulin or only a very small impact. So <laughs> that was a long winded answer. But the short answer is no, it won't break your fast. Someone named Pert Plus said, is keto healthy? <laughs> now, keto gets a bad rep, but that's mainly because the mainstream narrative for the last 50, 60 years, whatever it's been, has been that fat is bad and we should try to limit it as much as possible. The thinking is that fat causes cholesterol to raise, fat causes heart disease, fat increases your risk of diabetes, and all of these things have been debunked. Now, when it comes to the cholesterol, yes, high amounts of fat can raise your LDL, but it also lowers your triglycerides significantly and increases your HDL. And both of these two things together, triglycerides and HDL, are better indicators of disease risk than looking at LDL and looking at total cholesterol. So what happens when people start a keto diet is they see their triglycerides, which is the amount of fat in your blood, go way down. They see their HDL, which is the protective type of cholesterol, go up. And depending on how high their LDL was to start with, like there are some people who their LDL, eating a standard American diet is just through the roof. So when they start, it does go down, but it still tends to remain elevated above the reference range for what is considered to be healthy. But like I said, HDL and trigs are a better indicator. So you need to look at the big picture. And I do have a few videos on cholesterol talking about this a bit more in depth and I'll link one of those up above. So if you're concerned about cholesterol, eating keto, then check that out. So that is the main reason that diets high in fat are considered to be unhealthy. But I think that the results speak for themselves. I work with people every single day who are eating a keto diet or a carnivore diet, both high in fat, higher in protein and low in carbs. And consistently, these people see weight loss, they see a reduction in inflammation, in joint pain, they see their cholesterol numbers improve in the ways I just explained. They see their insulin resistance improve. Basically, all of the markers of health improve. So, <laughs> of course, I'm gonna say that keto is healthy. So Lynn asked, if I am in a fast time, so in her fasting window, should I still take diabetes meds? Now, I cannot give medical advice. You need to talk to your doctor in regards to your medication, tell them what you are doing, and they will adjust your meds accordingly. Something that I talk about in a lot of my videos is that if you are on any type of medication for diabetes, before you start keto, before you start intermittent fasting, you need to talk to your doctor, tell them what you're doing because your need for these medications will reduce rapidly. Think about it, if you are eating a diet that isn't raising your blood sugar, but you're still taking your medication, which is lowering your blood sugar, then you're just setting yourself up for hypoglycemia, which can be very, very dangerous. So don't make any changes to your medication. Go talk to your doctor, tell them what you're doing, tell them your concerns, and they will tell you where to go from there. All right, so I think in my last video, someone asked a question about how much protein they should be eating. And my general rule of thumb, my recommendation is you should be eating one gram of protein per pound of your ideal body weight. So your ideal body weight is 150 pounds, for example, then you want to be consuming 150 grams of protein. And this is not the weight of the meat. Obviously 150 grams of steak is very small. This is protein, the macronutrient. 
So I mentioned that in my last video, but I had just someone asking a question here saying, I was under the impression it was one gram of protein per one kilo of body weight. So significantly less, almost half as much. And he just thinks that the amount I recommend seems very high. Now, here's the thing. Most people are under consuming protein. And honestly, this makes such a difference. If you are hungry on keto, if you are hungry on your low carb diet, if you are having cravings, you're just finding it really difficult to stick to keto, up your protein. I can almost guarantee you won't be hungry in between meals, you won't have cravings, you're gonna feel better, you're not gonna lose muscle mass, which is a really big issue for people who start keto. They are afraid of protein, they don't eat enough protein, they're eating just high amounts of fat, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but when you're not getting enough protein, you're going to lose muscle mass. And this is going to show up as weight loss on the scale, so it might seem like a good thing, but we want to be holding on to as much muscle mass as we can, especially when we age. So back to the question, <laughs> if you are inactive, if you're sedentary and not doing much, you might get away with a little bit less protein than that, but honestly, protein, the most important macronutrient, try eating this recommendation and <laughs> let the results speak for themselves. Mark asked, have you ever thought of writing a book? I don't know if you have or not, but I think it would be a good seller. Uh, this is not something I've really thought about. I don't know, it's just not, I don't really like writing that much. I mean, I write my scripts for all my videos and that sort of thing, but I don't know. I don't know what I would write a book about, like what the overarching theme would be. It's not something I've thought about, but it could be a possibility somewhere down the track. All right, Tim, I think his name's Tim. He has sort of a weird username that I don't know how to pronounce. Sorry if that's you. Um, he asked, I can't gain weight on keto. What's the best way to gain 10 to 20 pounds? I get so full, so fast eating keto. Now, if you're trying to gain weight on keto, or just in general, the easiest way to get more calories in <laughs> and not feel as satiated is to drink your calories. So protein shakes with lots of added fat, some more bulletproof drinks throughout the day. You can do like a bulletproof bone broth. That's a good way to get a lot of calories in and you won't feel super full afterwards. Drinking your calories, honestly, that is the easiest way to get lots in. And especially if you're trying to put on muscle mass, then protein shakes can be a good option to just make sure that you are getting enough protein. Now, when it comes to protein powders, obviously there are so many on the market, but most of the mainstream brands have sugar added, they have artificial sweeteners, they have like wheat fillers and just a whole long list of crazy ingredients. There are only a couple protein powders that I have found that have good ingredients. One of them is from Equip. Yeah, Equip. Um, they have, I think, a vanilla and a chocolate. It's all like grass-fed beef, not collagen, grass-fed beef whey protein. Those ones are really good. It's pretty much just like three three ingredients I think for those two. There's also a really good, this one is a meal replacement and it's by the brand Get Health. Oh no, I think the brand's called Health Code, but their website is Get Health and that's health spelt H-L-T-H, <laughs> so no vowels in it. This is a company um, that was created by Dr. Ben Bickman, who, if you guys aren't familiar, he is like one of the leading researchers in the field of insulin resistance. He has a book called Why We Get Sick, which I absolutely highly recommend. On that note of books, just quickly, I want to say that I did a bookshelf tour on my vlog channel a couple months ago, and books are something I get asked about a lot. So if you guys wanna know what books I recommend, and just see my whole bookshelf. Um, I'll link that above. That's on my second channel, as I said. I'm getting so off track. <laughs> Anyways, um, Dr. Bickman, he created a meal replacement shake 
that is really good. Ingredients are super, super clean. It is loaded with pretty much like every nutrient in the most bioavailable forms. Again, I think it's whey protein in that and there's two flavors. I've actually tried this. I'm not a huge fan of meal replacement shakes in general because I think we should be eating most of our calories, but for situations like this where you're trying to gain weight, these can be a good option. Another thing that products like this can be good for is, well, <laughs> I'm having jaw surgery in two months. So <laughs> post-surgery, I'm gonna be on a liquid diet for a few weeks and then I don't think I can have solid foods for like three or four weeks. So when I heard about Dr. Bickman's company, I was over the moon. I'm like, okay, this is like what I need because that was one thing I was really concerned about is how am I gonna be consuming enough to like not waste away, to allow my body to heal and repair as quick as possible without having to consume like weird products and ingredients. I watched a video of another girl who had the same surgery done as I did and she was drinking Soylent, which is supposed to be like a perfectly balanced meal. I won't get too into soy today, but yeah, uh, that's just... <sighs> First off, it's super high in inflammatory omega-6, which is not great for healing. It's not the most bioavailable form of protein, so that's again, not great. And this girl was really struggling and not healing as quickly as she should have been. Um, that's what she was saying and she was sort of like upset about it in the video and uh, I can't help but think that the high amounts of Soylent she was drinking were part of the problem, but it could have been anything. Anyways, what was the question there? Oh, how to gain weight. <laughs> yeah, so two protein powders slash meal replacements I recommend. Protein powder from Equip, I'll link that down below, and the meal replacement shake from Health Code. I'll link that down below. I believe I have promo codes for both of these, so I'll put those in the description box. Blue Dolphin asks, do you ever give into cravings during that time of the month, like chocolate or any junk food in general? How do you eat during this time of the month? Okay, so I have a whole video about how to eat based on your cycle and also how to exercise. Now, when I was researching that video, it is, fascinating stuff. Basically, if you split our cycle up into two halves, during the first half of our cycle, we are more insulin sensitive, and during the second half of our cycle, we are more insulin resistant. And along with this, we also burn more calories in the second half of our cycle, up to 500 more per day. And this is why we get so many cravings before our periods because if you're still eating the same amount of food that you eat in the first half of your period, not half of your period, in the first half of your cycle, in the second half of your cycle, but you're burning like a decent amount more energy, of course you're gonna get cravings. So I won't get too into this in this video because like I expand on it a lot in that other video. I'll link that above. Honestly, that was a really good video. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, but yeah, I thought that was a really good video. It didn't perform too well, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, but this is what happens when I don't plan, when I try to just do a video spontaneously. Everything <laughs> just goes wrong. Now, my memory card filled up. So, I think I'm gonna take this as a sign to wrap this video up here. Thank you so much for your patience, guys. Before I do wrap up though, I'm gonna take a quick moment to tell you about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. So if you have a business, if you're self-employed, or even if you just wanna put together like a blog, or even, this is something I've seen people do, is do like their wedding invitation, have like a landing page for it, then definitely listen up because Squarespace can help you out. I've been using Squarespace for almost three years now since I started my health coaching business. I've used a few other similar platforms in the past and none of them have been as intuitive to use, have had everything I needed on one platform and really ended up looking as good as Squarespace. Seriously, the templates are awesome and easy to customize with style editing. 
They have email campaigns built right in so you can build your mailing list and manage it. Even set up automated emails right from their platform. And one of the coolest features is that Squarespace has built in SEO or search engine optimization tools. This means your website is more likely to show up in search results. If you want to check out Squarespace, you can head to squarespace.com forward slash healthcoachkate. And when you love it and decide to launch, use code healthcoachkate to save 10% off your first purchase. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All right, guys, thank you again for tuning in. And if you did enjoy this q and I'm gonna try to do them monthly. So if you have a question for the next one which you'd like me to answer, you can leave it in the comment section down below. And I'm gonna be back next week with my regularly scheduled content. I have some really great ideas for videos coming your way. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my last Q&A, which I will link right here. If you wanna catch up on my most recent upload, you can click here. And if you wanna check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can click here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.